So here's the first theorem of section 4.6. And this theorem tells us that if two matrices A and B are row equivalent, then their row spaces are the same. So what this is saying is that, in other words, the row space of matrix B is equal to the row space of matrix A. This theorem also tells us that if matrix B is in echelon form, then the non-zero rows of B form a basis for the row space of matrix A as well as the row space of matrix B. So we need to prove this. So let's go ahead and look at the proof for this first statement. If the two matrices are row equivalent, then their row spaces are the same. So if matrix B is attained from matrix A by row operations, the rows of matrix B are linear combinations of the rows of matrix A. So the rows of matrix B are linear combinations of the rows of matrix A. So it follows then that any linear combination of the rows of matrix B are automatically a linear combination of the rows of matrix A. So any linear combination of the rows of matrix B are automatically a linear combination of the rows of matrix A. So in other words, the row space of matrix B is contained in the row space of matrix A. Or we can put this in shorthand and say that so the row space of matrix B is a subspace of the row space of matrix A. And this is because the row space of B is contained in the row space of A. Now, since row operations are reversible, the same argument is going to show that the row space of matrix A is a subspace of the row space of matrix B. So the same argument then shows that the row space of matrix A is a subspace of the row space of matrix B. And using a little logic here, if we have that the row space of B is contained in the row space of A, and the row space of A is contained in the row space of B, then the row spaces are the same. So then the row space of matrix B is equal to the row space of matrix A. And so the first part of our theorem has been shown. And so let's go ahead now and show that the second statement is holding true, that if matrix B is in echelon form, the non-zero rows of matrix B form a basis for the row space of matrix A, as well as for the row space of matrix B. So suppose that matrix B is in echelon form. Then the non-zero rows of matrix B are linearly independent. So then the non-zero rows of matrix B are linearly independent. And why? Well, this is because no non-zero row is a linear combination of the non-zero rows below it. So then, by the spanning set theorem, the non-zero rows of matrix B will span the row space of matrix B. So then, by the spanning set theorem, we can conclude that the non-zero rows of matrix B will span the row space, will forgot the most important word, will span the row space of matrix B. 
So in other words, the non-zero rows of matrix B are a linearly independent set that spans the row space of matrix B. The non-zero rows of matrix B, which is an echelon form, are a linearly independent set that spans the row space of matrix B. So the non-zero rows of matrix B in echelon form are a linearly independent set that spans the row space of matrix B. So therefore, by definition, the non-zero rows will form a basis of the row space of B and the row space of A because it's a common row space. So the non-zero rows of matrix B form a basis for the row space of matrix B, which we just saw is a common row space with that of matrix A. And we have the second portion of our proof complete.